Hi, this is Jeff Curto, and welcome to episode number 192 of Camera Position, the podcast about the creative side of photography. Well, in my study and practice of photography, I've always tried to find a deeper set of meanings to the medium, to look at images not only for what they are, but also for what we can learn about ourselves and the world around us through them. And that learning and understanding can come both from looking at photographs and from making them. And also from thinking about the way in which photography and the visual world and the way of visual communication that photography represents, uh, the way that works and how we come to know those things. Well, an early influence on my ways of thinking about photography on a deeper level was the great writer John Berger. Berger was a poet, a novelist, an artist, a screenwriter, and more. He was born in 1926 and died just a few weeks ago in January of 2017 at the age of 90. When I heard about his death, I got some of his books off my shelf and reread them. I also watched, or rewatched rather, uh, his four 30-minute television broadcasts from the 1970s called Ways of Seeing. I remember seeing these uh, way back when I was an undergraduate student uh, in photography, and now, of course, they're available on YouTube. Uh, so I'll link to them both in the uh, uh, cameraposition.com blog and also in the PDF that comes along with the app. It's kind of, kind of fun to watch them, uh, 1970s television. Just uh, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of really wonderful anachronistic pieces in there, so enjoy those if you happen to watch. In any case, as I reread Berger's words, words that I'd first confronted in the 1980s, I was really struck by how resonant his ideas were in today's time. For a man who was writing long before the advent of either digital photography or the way that the internet could transmit digital images in an instantaneous way, he had an amazing prescience about the way we see the way we interpret and share photographs in our 21st century world. All of Berger's work is about how we come to see things and how we interpret what we see. And he looks at the world of photography as well as the worlds of other visual arts. Just as importantly, his writing concentrates on what meaning we can construct from things that we see and how those visual encounters impact us. Here are a few examples to give you an idea of how John Berger approaches the notion of human vision. So I'm quoting now from Berger. What served in place of the photograph before the camera's invention? The expected answer is the engraving, the drawing, the painting. The more revealing answer might be memory. What photographs do out there in space was previously done within reflection. Images were first made to conjure up the appearance of something that was absent. Gradually, it became evident that an image could outlast what it represented. It then showed how something or somebody had once looked, and thus by implication how the subject had once been seen by other people. Later still, the specific vision of the image maker was also recognized as part of the record. An image became a record of how X had seen Y. Unlike any other visual image, a photograph is not a rendering, an imitation, or an interpretation of its subject, but actually a trace of it. No painting or drawing, however naturalist, belongs to its subject in the way a photograph does. So that, I think, is one of the more interesting aspects of this, and it's one of the ways in which Berger began to uh, put forward the idea of photography uh, and its artistic implications in uh, those, uh, those writings of the 1970s and 1980s. He goes on to say, Photographs are not, as it is often assumed, a mechanical record. Every time we look at a photograph, we are aware, however slightly, of the photographer selecting that sign from an infinity of other possible sites. This is true even in the most casual family snapshot. 
the photographer's way of seeing is reflected in his choice of subject. The painter's way of seeing is reconstituted by the marks he makes on the canvas or paper. Yet, although every image embodies a way of seeing, our perception or appreciation of an image depends on your own way of seeing. Your own way of seeing. So I think, you know, those longtime listeners to the podcast can probably hear an awful lot of the ideas that I've articulated already in camera position uh, from these words. Uh, the idea that every image embodies a way of seeing. Our perception or appreciation of an image also depends on our own way of seeing. So if you've not encountered John Berger before, pick up a copy of one of his books. I'd suggest with uh, starting with About Looking, uh, which uh, I'll link to in the, the Camera Position blog and also on the PDF, and give it a read. If, like me, you're a longtime acquaintance of Berger's writing, reread him again and see how his writing intersects with your ways of seeing. Um, and uh, uh, if you haven't encountered him before, I think one of the things that you'll discover is that he speaks to our sensibility of how we come to not only encounter a subject, but how our viewers will come to encounter the photographs that we make. Thanks for listening, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Camera Position, the podcast about the creative side of photography.